It's HDTV time, make brochures and yard signs. Us girls always on our minds, list your house and lots of signs. Put booties on your toes, may even match your clothes. Open house and private shows, just please don't scratch my flow. We're your ad guys. Hello, welcome back to Hayden Hill Hat Homes. The intro song was our new parody, so keep an eye out for the newest and hottest video coming. Um, on today's agenda, a few of our clients have sent in questions on Twitter and Facebook and Insta and LinkedIn and all of those different places regarding home insurance. So today we're speaking with Eric Tarian at Michigan Insurance Network Agency. Hi, Eric. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. And I'm excited to answer some questions. Great, because we have lots of them for you. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Our clients ask us a lot of things about insurance and insurance coverage. And I always say talk to the expert. You know, I try to stay in my lane. Yeah, and definitely. Eric's our expert today. So he's going to help us understand the importance of different insurance policies for homeowners. I'll be talking about flood insurance, a replacement cost coverage, and it's most importantly, different ways to help save money on your insurance. Uh, Eric, could you let us know at what part during a real estate transaction that a buyer or seller should contact an insurance agency? Well, it's funny you ask because most people wait until the last minute. They're going to close the next day, but really, you want to start, <laughs> you want to do it as soon as possible. Uh, the, one of the things, you, a flood policy, you don't know, well, you need to know right away if you need that. Things like that can take a while, um, and the prices can throw people off. They can affect your closing. So it's something you should do right away because it's part of the cost of home ownership, but most people don't do it soon enough, and it doesn't cost anything to start the process. That is a really good point because a lot of people would think, like, I'm going to start paying as soon as I call him, but you're not actually going to start paying until the day the policy begins, which is exactly. you your move-in date, right? That's a really good point. That's a really good point, Karen. I was just, yeah, thank you. What, so. what I always tell my clients to do is when we have a house under contract, during the time that they're going to be doing the homeowner's inspection, so they are already under contract. So at that time, just like when you go to buy a car, you check the insurance on the day that you're deciding to buy the car and you're looking at how much it's going to cost you because the day that you decide that you've bottom lined a contract and you're going to go for it with an inspection the other thing that happens is um you start calling your lender and you start talking to your lender about your numbers but you're forgetting one really big number that you've estimated you've estimated the homeowner's insurance and if you don't know that that house is on a floodplain and if you're buying a house in belleville or on the lake in brighton or in the irish hills if you don't know that that house is on a floodplain, you don't realize that that's gonna be a different insurance cost. And Eric is gonna talk about um, that right now. How, Eric, when a house is on a floodplain, doesn't insurance cost a little bit more? Absolutely, it's a completely separate policy from a homeowner's insurance policy. And they're all, they're done through, it's called the National Flood Insurance Program. It's part of the government, FEMA does it, and Homeland Security. And it doesn't matter what agency you buy it from or what company, it's all the same price because it's through the government. Um, but it's something you would definitely want to shop. There's a lot of different options as far as deductibles and whatnot. And they only go up to 250000 So if you have a house that's worth a lot more, there are different uh, companies I work with that can go beyond that and customize policies going as high as a million dollars. So That's really good. That's really good to hear. I, I just don't like it when people find out a few days before they're closing because now the lender said, okay, go and get your homeowner's insurance, you know, and it's a few days before closing and they go, wait, we're on a floodplain? But I didn't think that we were anywhere near the lake. And that's a big issue too. You never know. There's Those zones are determined by the government as well and, and they know what they're doing, but you'd be surprised. There's some flood zones will pop up in the middle of a little city that you would never think are there. So it's a good thing to know and the cost of them typically is quite a bit more than homeowners and church. It depends on the flood zone, um, but they have what's called an elevation certificate and a um, flood cert and it all plugs in, but you need to know that ahead of time because it can get costly. It can be cheap, but it can be quite costly as well. Sweet. And it's a second policy then on top of your policy or it's a it rider? Is, yeah, it is. It, it's, a, it's a separate policy. Okay. Some people get it mixed up. If you can get like water and sewer back up to cover your basement, that's part of your homeowner's policy. A flood policy is a separate policy. And like I said, they're, you know, they're through the government, through uh, the National Flood Insurance Program, but it is completely separate. Okay. So based off what you said, are you saying that like the flood policy or like the protection for floods is customizable or better said, is it made on a home to home basis? Case well, by case. Yeah. there there is some specifics, you know, depending on your home, the elevation of your home. But 
Um, you know, do you have a basement? Do you not have a basement? Is it elevated? The home, you know, some places are on pillars down south and whatnot. So there are home specifics there, plus the value of the home all becomes part of it. The biggest determination is going to be the flood zone, and that's determined by the government. So let's let's. Ask and a flood policy is not just for if you if you go down to your basement, and you've got water in the basement. That's sewer backup. That's water backup. You know, the sump pump. So that's field, not whatever. a flood. We're not talking about. If you're walking out your front door and you're in standing water, let's say like two acres of water, you know, that's a flood. Your neighborhood is underwater. So when we talk about flood insurance, we're not talking about in the case that your basement. Floods. You have a foot of water in your basement. That's not a flood policy. That's going to be the sewer backup, a water backup. You could have a burst pipe within your house. That's a separate thing as you know from flood so policies first as well. So a pipe would be a regular insurance claim. That's going to be covered on pretty much, I should say, pretty much any uh, policy. There are some real basic policies, fire policies and whatnot that don't cover everything. Most people are going to have what's called the broad form policy, and it, it covers everything except for a few specific things. Okay. Um, so what if my street floods? This has happened several times. Your and, entire neighborhood? Yeah, your let's street? say my entire neighborhood floods. That's a flood. And my basement floods. Well, yeah. But so it, is everything in my basement covered because I have flood insurance? Depending, you don't, so when someone gets a mortgage, the mortgage company, they're concerned about themselves. They're insuring the house. They want to make sure the house is covered. So not everyone adds the contents. Those are contents of the house. A lot of people don't want to add them because they don't want to pay for it. It's, the flood. it's never going to flood is what people always say. It's just like they're never no, going they to die. No, they ask me, has the basement flooded yet? And I go, not yet. <laughs> not that you know of. Other agents <laughs> say, well, the seller's disclosure looks like a dry. I mean, I don't want to talk about other agents. But, you know, some people say it could be a dry. It looks like a dry basement. It doesn't look like there's ever been any water here. I, I was a geography minor. <laughs> it's not flooded, not yet. But when the big corporation might build something, it can change. And then he just said that if you don't have the contents covered for the basement, that like the boxes and all of that, though that right. those that stuff isn't covered unless you put like a rider or like a well, it's rider. just part of the policy. But you don't. The mortgage company is not going to require you to have the contents insured because. You know, they don't care if you have any clothes or furniture okay. the next day. They just want to make they're sure responsible they're responsible for the house. All they care about is the house, yeah. and it's nothing personal. But okay, so that's good. So we, and you should have it. And most people put some on there, but you, if you're, all your clothing and stuff is upstairs, you're probably okay. But right, but and like, like what if you have all your important things from your grandmother, like I do? In but you can't even replace them though. Right, that's they're irreplaceable. But still, I'll be like, and you get no money. I know, but if I did get somebody, at least I'd feel a little better that grandma's stuff is gone. Right. Karen, let's ask him some more of the okay. questions that uh, we have. Uh, thanks, Eric. <laughs> thanks. Would you tell us about some of the packages that you offer? Well, every company is going to have their own packages. So when someone calls me and I put together a proposal, I I like to do an apples apples proposal and then I like to do my recommendation. And it's hard to do an apples apples because every company has got their little tweaks and coverages here and there. So I, in my case, I do you know the apples apples or better when I'm doing that. Um, but it's gonna vary from company to company and it can vary quite drastically. Some of my companies will offer as much as they, you know you can get a cash out you know, in the case of a total loss. Those are rare, but there are some companies that will do that. Uh, service line coverage is a big thing that I like to talk about because most companies only cover what's inside the four walls of the basement. So you've got the sewer going outside, the water, the public utilities. None those, of those things are covered. Most yeah. people don't have that coverage, but it is out there. If you have more questions about insurance policies and coverages, go ahead and ask your questions in the comments below and we'll make sure that Eric has an opportunity to, <laughs> to, give, us, to give us some answers for your questions. Put them in the comments below. Just kidding right there. Just Hayden right Hill there. Hot Homes. Hayden Hill Hot Homes. Okay, so I have a question. Yeah. Um, so when you have a piece of really beautiful jewelry that is given to you by a wonderful friend, um, or not, but maybe you bought it for yourself. I don't know. But I'm just saying that there has been times that maybe someone has said, maybe you need a, like a writer on your insurance for this when they give it to you as a gift. So what does that mean? Well, most homeowners policies are going to cover some jewelry and it's going to have some coverage automatically and it's going to vary depending on the, the policy. But there's going to be limits to it. And a lot of times it's going to be 2,500, it might be 5,000, it could be higher, but it's going to vary per policy. So if someone has jewelry, furs, uh, gun collections, anything that's of a unique value out of your ordinary, you need to talk to your insurance agent. I mean, ultimately they're asking you, but you want to disclose that stuff because you, know, you can have that loss of something unique that you know, a lot of times I have people that inherit collections that are worth a lot of money. They don't realize the value, but it's, 
you need to add that stuff if it's above and beyond your ordinary. It's not just a piece of furniture. It's, it, it's one little item, especially jewelry. Those are so easy to lose. Um, yeah, and our, a, lot of, a lot of our clients are very artistic and have studios and things like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even golfers. I mean, some people have thousands of dollars in sports equipment, bikers. I so mean, if I bought a house and then bought um, these really expensive golf clubs two years later, I can call you and say, hey, can I add this? Exactly. Any, anything, with, and that's, people always get worried that when they finish the conversation that oh, if I didn't do it right, you know, like they're stuck. It's, I always tell people, you can wake up the next day, call your agent, and you can make that change. If you're not comfortable with the deductible of anything, you can make that change. It's, it doesn't have to wait until the next renewal. You can make the change whenever you're comfortable. Don't call your agent, oh. call Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that he's not your agent. If he's your agent, call him. But if he's not yet, then call him as well. Well, what I liked when we first met Eric is how easy he was to talk to about things. I never felt like if I spoke to him, the insurance company was going to come for my money. You know, I, I felt like when I was speaking with him, he was just giving me information. That's important. No and pressure. I I don't no pressure. I don't represent one company, so I, I do what's in the customer's best interest. And... And I'll take questions too. I have, you know, if someone has a question, yeah, contact me. Text, Eric's information is below in the comments. Text comment. me, email me, call me. I'll answer the questions. And, you know, you can always go from there. And it just goes back. You might already have the perfect policy. You might have everything you need. You know, they but. don't have you. Well, they don't have you. <laughs> you will. And so will I. So, uh. <laughs> Eric is also really responsive. He's really res responsive. I asked him a couple of insurance questions on LinkedIn and he just, you know, it was just, oh, I need to ask somebody a question and right there. So uh, you can also find Eric on LinkedIn. And again, all of this information links will be below along with ours and our wonderful videographer, Andy. All right, Eric, so I have a question. Um, so we have a seller and basically they sell their home, the house becomes vacant. Um, should that seller be contacting you during the time that the house is in escrow? Anytime the house is going to becomes vacant or you vacate the house, you should talk to your agent. There's a good chance most policies are going to cover it for 30 days, and they don't care about the escrow. What they, all they care about is the vacancy, the occupancy of the house. And anytime the occupancy of the dwelling changes, you should contact your agent for sure. Call Eric every time. Every time, Eric. <laughs> every time. <laughs> Since you stayed for the entire video. Um, you get to hear this last question. How are rates determined for insurance? Every company is going to use their own formula, their own algorithm, and it varies drastically from one to the other. Um, there's even one company I know, which I'm not going to mention in the state of Michigan, that uses your auto, your, your driving record affects your homeowner's rates. That's new as of last year. None of my companies do it. But I don't know. I they, <laughs> every... Like we drive a lot. You know, Can take out a garage? <laughs> <laughs> What's the value of the home, the age of the occupants, all the basics, where you live, those are all factors. Some companies are going to look at, do you have a mortgage? Well, you're going to pay a little bit more if you have a mortgage or two or three. That's going to affect it. Do you smoke? Can affect it. It could have a dangerous dog surcharge, trampoline surcharge. Dangerous what? dog surcharge. Trampoline. Yeah, I have one thing. I wanted a trampoline, and they're like, you need to get a rider in insurance. Well, and some yeah. companies. Most of the companies don't have a problem. Some won't touch it. It, it depends. Some won't They're, touch a trampoline. Oh yeah, I have some to change companies tr insurance companies. You might. I want. What? Okay. It depends on the company. Every and every company is different. And it's, there's not a lot of these things. There's not one answer because every company treats things differently. How about pools? Um, most companies don't have a problem with it. There's different things, you know, as far as having it fenced in and locked. You know, if you have a slide, how tall is the slide? Things of that nature. So it all plays into it. But most of them, and there might be a surcharge for it. Which okay. is understandable. You're going to pay a little bit more for liability in case some kid okay. gets breaks right. in or whatever. So what can I do to save money? Oh, well, <laughs> it's a good question. Um, obviously, you can always lower your coverage or raise your deductibles. Those are the obvious ones, but I never want to lower uh, coverages unless I have to. The biggest discount you're going to get on your homeowner's insurance with most companies is going to be having your auto insurance with the same company. It could be as high as, you know, 25, 35% just oh. for having those bundled together. You said 25, 35%? That's some, really some good companies will go that high. Multiple cars and multiple totally houses. Yeah. yeah. It's huge. And not every company is like that, but most are going to be like that. So that, that's going to be your number one factor right there. Do you do and even, oh, sorry. Go ahead. And even having more than one, some companies will give you an additional discount if you have life insurance with them or if you have your motorcycles, all your toys, it goes on. So bundling is going to be the biggest way to save money. But I always say that the biggest thing is to shop around. There's not, the, the biggest question I get from everyone is, 
who's the best company? Who's got the best rates? And that's not one answer. But are they able to shop around with you because you're party to so many different companies? Yeah, I'll so shop. You're like a one-stop shop. I guess it's like it's like, like us being a real, no, like us being realtors. Yeah. Like so, like if you come to us, we're gonna help you shop. Yeah, we're gonna show you all the, the houses. houses. You don't have to call one real estate agent for every house. Or like Hipmunk, you don't have to go to just one. Uh, this was not paid for by Hipmunk. You do not, you know, you do not, <laughs> you do not have to go to just one airlines, American Airline or Spirit. You can see everybody with all the best rates on mm -hmm. Hipmunk, and that's what we're able to right. do with your company because you mean you're... Travelocity. No, I use Hipmunk. I use Expedia. You okay? Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is my question. So yeah, it, it, so the point is to shop because whatever the best company for you f to bundle everything could be totally different for you. For me, it really could be four different companies for the four of us. And it varies your next door neighbor, just because it's the best for them. It doesn't mean it is the best for you. And it, it's that dry. you've got to shop. And a lot of people don't because I get it. Insurance is not exciting. And it's something people don't want to deal with, but it's you know a major not exciting? expense. Giving people my money when I don't have to. That's, That's not, not exciting. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How agree. about I have it to give, but maybe I want to keep it. <laughs> How about if um, you're a teacher or something like that? Do you deal with like teacher insurance? Oh, absolutely. Like that, Mimic. Or yeah, Mimic's a great company. I don't. Uh, Mimic has their own agents, and it's owned by AAA, oh, by okay. the way. So they, it's um, owned by AAA. It is owned by AAA, and I it's open to a lot more companies what? now. But some, um, like one of my companies, will give. I think right now it's a twenty or twenty-three percent discount for teachers. So, oh, so they different they occupations. Oh, so maybe so isn't the best. It, it, it might be. It, isn't the, it might be the best for people, but it's not the only, only. option it, if teachers it, are trying to get discounts. It, exactly, and that goes for all occupations. Exactly. Yeah. Talk to your insurance agent Police about what officer, you do. Police officer, firefighter, all that, because you know they usually stay with who they go with because they're expecting discounts. Or and USAA. It's better than triple. Oh, right, USAA. Yeah, yeah that's, that's another, another one, one where yeah. you know they're not. They, their commercials say that, you know, we've got the best rates. People call around, we're the best. It's not, not always the case, not at all. So here's another question then. What is the difference between replacement cost cover? Oh, right, right. <laughs> another <laughs> bonus, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> another so bonus answer. Rate. No, these are, these are just really good questions. Sure. And, you know, you do these things. How often do you shop for insurance? We don't really shop that much for insurance. We know more about what we buy at the grocery store than we do about insurance. But when things really get bad, we really need our insurance. And sometimes it's not until things get bad that we go, oh, let me shop. Let me ask the next insurance cover. And I wouldn't shop every year or every six months. Some people do that. Um, a lot of companies will give you a better rate if you've been with your prior insurance carrier for three years or five years. So having some really? longevity is good. I didn't know that for car insurance. So if you are Say that again. That was if awesome. you've been some of the, a lot of the companies will give you a better rate. If you've been with your prior insurance company for five years, they'll give you a better rate than if you've been with them for six months. So there's different factors like that. And I'm not saying don't shop. You should shop, but don't do it. Every, don't move companies every year. I mean, I get it. If, if you yeah. have a rate, a big rate increase, of course, you, you need to go down the road and find someone better. There's a loyalty. Yeah. Uh, there can be. Yeah, but it, you but you're doing yourself a disservice. If you don't check around every three years at There's least. There's also a loyalty bonus about going with Hayden Hill Hot <laughs> Just to put that in there. <laughs> Especially yes. if you're a teacher, we're actually offering bonuses to teachers right now. And uh, we're contributing to schools. We are, we're giving back to schools. So teachers, give us a call and then we'll refer you to Eric. That's right. I feel like I need to do some dancing to give us like an intermission for all this like information that we're spitting. Can well, I, can I still ask one more question? Go. Oh, yes. You have a question? No. Oh, okay. He wanted to dance. I do too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll leave that to you too. <laughs> so what's the difference between replacement cost coverage and total actual cash coverage? And that's a great question. Most policies are going to have replacement cost coverage on there and you should have that. The difference is, let's say, God forbid your house burns down tonight and you have to go replace everything that's in there, your furniture, your clothing, all that stuff. Replacement cost is what does it cost to go to the store and replace it? Actual cash value is, what do you go, if you go on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, what's the market value? That's actual cash value. Oh. So you can really take a big hit, wow. especially with certain things. You know, <laughs> replacement, co replacement cost you is giving you new. Well, exactly. So, and I, don't I don't run into it often, but I'll, once in a while, I'll be, you know, someone new and I'll be looking like, oh my gosh, they don't even have a replacement cost. You've, you know, you definitely want to have that yeah. on there. So. <laughs> Darren's like, going, what? Yeah. Let me take a note on this. <laughs> <laughs> I need insurance.
right. So, Eric, that was great. That was that was a lot of really great answers. Um, I think that you answered a lot of questions, but sometimes I think that when we learn more, we have more questions. So sure. I want people to feel comfortable. Whenever I learn anything new, I always realize all the other things that I don't know and all the other additional questions that I have based on what I heard in the conversation. So again, we just want to make sure that everybody um, knows that you can ask questions below in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> like we tell our students, there's no such thing as a stupid question. That's right. That yeah. is very true. Yeah. And we're all available to answer all of your questions. It's really easy. So give us a call. Ring, ring. It's HGTV time, make brochures and yard signs. Us girls always on our minds. List your house with lots of signs. Put booties on your toes, may even match your clothes. Open house and private shows. Just please don't scratch my flow. We're your ad guys. Duh.